From the host of Super Bowl 50 back in February of 2016, there's a look at the home of the 49ers, Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi's Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Now a man who really stepped up last year. This is Matt Breida. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Matt Breida out of Georgia Southern now in his third year in a 49er uniform. He was tough to keep off the field last year. Very good yards per carry. 5.3 on 153 attempts. Good for over 800 yards rushing. On second down, a run with Breida. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Here we go, here we go. What do you need? Check, tight right, tight right, tight right. Still out there, check the outside. Yes, cut! Garoppolo after the fake give to Breida. Taking a shot for Samuel. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them go, up, have them back on their heels. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Garoppolo gives to Breda. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Goodwin able to haul it in. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one good for 24 yards. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. On first down, here's Breida. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. All right, Brent, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Here we go, the last here we go, here we go. run got six, now second and four. Here we go, here we go. They go counter with Breda. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority here one. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. They're able to haul it in as Kittle. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. The head coach relied on his eagle eye in the sky to make the right call and was told to challenge it, and it looks like it's paid off. And from a coach's standpoint, when you throw that flag, it's probably a pretty tense moment here it pays off. Yeah, you have that little bit of indecision. You throw it where you feel like you're right, and then you think, uh-oh, did I get it right? In this case, they can celebrate. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Seattle Seahawks 7-2 and two through nine weeks of the season. Their offense coming back out here. You know, Charles, this Seattle team looks really good. We talked about Russell Wilson, how good he's been. Where's the weak spot for the Seahawks crew? Believe it or not, consistent pass rush. And the reason I say believe it or not, when you think of the players who are along that defensive front, it's a surprise because they've gotten Jaron Reed back. He missed the first six Go. games of the season. Remember, Go. he was double-digit sacks Go. in 2018, a defensive tackle. They've added Jadevian Clowney, defensive end, consistently presses for 10 sacks or more in a season. Ziggy Ansah, who, when healthy, is a double-digit sack guy. I think as the season moves on, it would not surprise me at all that that pass rush gets ramped up a little bit, and then Seattle would be really difficult to deal with. Week 10, how about this battle playing against the undefeated 49ers? Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett, 67 yards. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. It took them a while to get their speedster involved, but they found him downfield there. And what we've discovered as we've watched games is the speedster doesn't have to have a lot of catches, doesn't have to have volume in order to have a huge impact on the game. His speed scares the heck out of defenses, and other guys can capitalize, but when you finally hit him and he carries it all the way into the end zone, that's what you're paying him for, that big threat that can make big plays on a limited number of catches. That's how you step on the stage with your first catch, take it to the house. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. 49ers coming back out here on offense. We mentioned their 8-0 start to the season. They actually broke an eight-game losing streak to the Cardinals when they defeated them. Eight-game losing streak? Yeah, they had lost the Cardinals eight straight times. That's four seasons worth. Yeah. Wow. And then a 28-25 victory this past week snapped that. But it was also the first game this year that the Niners have actually thrown it more times than they ran the football CD. And that is something that I think people are starting to come to grips with yeah, about San Francisco because yeah, you think yeah. about their head coach Kyle Shanahan and his reputation as an offensive wizard and whenever we hear that what's the first thing we think throwing the football he's always been a run based guy here we go, here and he go, wants that go. running Wait. game finally tuned because it travels late in the season and it travels through the playoffs and that's what they that's what leads San Francisco they had to go the other way against Arizona in order to secure the win. Well, if the Niners have it their way, the only travel they'll be doing in the playoffs will be to Miami. Because as it stands right now at 8-0, they would play at home until that point. And why Miami? Super Bowl. There you go. Here we go. 180! 50! 50's a mic! 50's a mic! So don't say nothing! On first down, Garoppolo. And a loose football! And the Seahawks have picked it up. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Wilson. They'll find Ballore out of the backfield. No gain there, and it's going to bring up a third down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, 
No yardage. Okay. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Now it's Wilson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Fourth down and out is the all-pro punter from a year ago, Michael Dixon, to punt for Seattle. The 49ers have Richie James back deep. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And a fumble last time, ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team go, gets go. together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And there's so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Down. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. They give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. First time that they called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. Samuel, the 36 overall pick in last year's draft. Played his college ball at South Carolina. Really good senior campaign. 62 catches, 882 yards, and also threw in 11 touchdowns for good measure. They go play action here on first down. Deep ball for Goodwin. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, go, at least you've told the Wait, defense hey. you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Garoppolo to try again on second down. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. To throw, it's Garoppolo. That's complete to a speedy wideout, Goodwin. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A big 30-yard play on third. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. A 20-yard touchdown. And once again, the 49ers are back out in front. 
boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails? Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is now 10-7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, realize it hasn't worked so well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. On second down, it's Carson. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. On third down, Wilson. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Richard Sherman. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. So after the INT, it's Garoppolo. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here we go, able here to get here seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Garoppolo now. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Here we go. A good Back chance eight. this is four down territory if they're unable to convert, but right now looking at a third and three. Garoppolo looks to throw. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. And this won't get there. Won't be online either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. A 55-yard attempt, normally you'd say well within his range. little surprised he came up short. And he knew it immediately, didn't he? They are so calibrated, aren't they? They can tell the touch, the feel. When they put the foot to the ball, whether it's going to be good or not, he knew immediately he didn't have that one. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Play, 
So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Wilson. He'll find Metcalf. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. To throw again on second down. Wilson, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Wilson, here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 23 yards on the play. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. No room to be had there on the first down run as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. What an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. I got you. I got you. On second down now, it's Carson. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size and these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. To throw on third down, Wilson. And that is incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus-yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still hey, want to try go, one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight go, end. Nice Wait. completion, just like they do it in practice. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They run with Breda. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. 
Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, Here we go. go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Garoppolo, man open, it's good one. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the go, ball on the receiver Please. before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This is Breda pushing through the contact. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through didn't happen on that play. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. To throw is Garoppolo. Over the middle, and he's got good one complete. And now a fumble. The ball's out, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, Wilson out to his left and avoids the contact by sliding. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. On second down, it's Carson, and he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. And the Seahawks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They're up against a third and one situation. Rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. The improvisation gets him only a couple, but that's all he needed. First down. You and I both know most coaches are really fearful about their quarterbacks running with the ball. They don't want him to take that big hit. I don't think they worry about that with Russell Wilson. He's so smart in what he does, and we just saw it there on that scramble. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Caught, it's Wilson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. They run it with Carson. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Throwing on second and 14. Wilson. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. He'd Let's had some success stop. as a runner previously on this drive, just not as much space there that time. Yeah, this time when he pulled it down, they were ready for him. So I think he's going to have to fling a few in order to open up that running lane again. And the Seahawks on third down. Two for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. From the shotgun, Wilson. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Jimmy Ward. And he'll bring it all the way back just a yard or two shy of midfield. 
Well, with that incompletion, let's tap into the useless facts file, shall we? Three guys with the last name Allen got the start in week nine. Josh in Buffalo, Kyle in Carolina, Brandon in Denver. All three got the win. And Charles, that's the first time in league history that three QBs sharing the last name won on the same weekend. How about that? And I think for Brandon Allen, his first start as well. So not bad. Now throw in the guys who have the same go, last name in their starts. Let's go to 2000. The Johnsons, Brad, Doug, and Rob. And in 1984, we're really digging deeper. I love this. Dave, Wade, and Mark Wilson. Now, to my recollection, none of them were related. Just all had the same last name. Who would you take, the Johnsons? Or would you take the Wilsons? <laughs> I'll take the Johnsons because I actually remember them playing. But, oh, I'm sorry, you're getting mad at me for that comment. <laughs> But go, none of them ever won on the same weekend, so we witnessed NFL history this past week. We certainly did. Great NFL history. At least Brad Johnson won a Super Bowl. Now Garoppolo. He's going to wind up. And this is caught inside the five. That one good for 37 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. They'll try to run with Breda, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A loss of two there, second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. And his throw's going to be incomplete. George Kittle, the Pro Bowl tight end, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit. But only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Throwing now is Garoppolo toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And his kick here is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the eight. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks, and while it'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A really nice gain of 25 yards. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. All day. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. 
You can't block me. You can't block me. You can't block me. <laughs> now Wilson on first down. It's caught. Lock it. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one oh, yeah. good for seven yards. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now it's Wilson. Completes it to Dixon. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Wilson now hitting on two-thirds of his passes, 10 for 15 so far, first and 10. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. That'll pick up the first down for Seattle on a gain of 18. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great, and they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are, and I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing, but I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. On, Let's go. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Throwing is Wilson to the goal line, but it's incomplete. The linebacker Fred Warner right there on the coverage. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. The line of scrimmage once again, the five as they get ready for second and goal. Here's Wilson. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So third and goal, and the 49er faithful making some noise for their defense. From the gun, it's Wilson. Steps away, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. Russell Wilson with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Seahawks have once again taken the lead. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? 
If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Garoppolo after the fake give to Breda. And that's complete to Sanders. And he is down deep into Seattle territory. Let's go, baby. A Let's big go. play there just before halftime. And even 40 yards. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Garoppolo again. That's going to be caught by Samuel. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought Get down. Get that boy. throw good for four. It's second down. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you cross country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy back. of the 30. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now it's Carson. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Go. Go. On first down, Wilson. That's complete into the hands of Carson. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Now it's Wilson, and a completion to Wilson. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That one a first down pickup of eight. 
And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. To throw on second and ten. Wilson. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. And now offensively it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, Actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. And he's got Lockett. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Wilson now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Wilson will throw again. This complete to lock it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go no on second down. You don't want no me. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Throwing again here, Wilson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. This close to the goal line, you got to be very careful with the offense calls rub routes. When I call a pick trying to screen you off from your coverage, does a nice job of avoiding that and helping force an incompletion. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. To throw again is Wilson. And Dixon has it. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Russell Wilson keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Myers connects on the PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This will be fielded at the eight. 
And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the right, half. Here we go, here we go. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. 20, 10, touchdown, 49ers. Matt Breida, 72 yards as his guys are back within a single score. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a here play go, for the go, score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This is fielded a couple yards deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 24. Looks like he's gonna get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Throwing on second and eight, Wilson. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field has popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. Here we go. 180. Check 54. 54. Watch, watch the play. Watch the play. Watch the play. That's complete to a speedy wideout Goodwin. Now a loose football, the ball comes out. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> It's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't oh, take it away. 
Tackle made by Rasheem Green. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Here we go, the first here we go, here down we go. run got five. Here's second and five. Here I come. 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 They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. He'll get 17 on that one, and the Niners have a first down. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these go, big go. runs that we're seeing, they don't result without Let's everyone go. else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield too. Here's Burita. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to go, see that. Go, go. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. To throw, it's Garoppolo. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Levine Toilolo, the tight end, is intended target. And now it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. It's caught by Sanders, and he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty go, veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young... He... Now Garoppolo lost the football. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because... This is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually go, looking go, in the go. other direction, like downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now it's Breda. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Here we go, How here crucial we go. will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. Going to throw deep for the end zone. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And his kick is indeed good. And that will cut the lead down to just two. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him.
So the lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. The uh, first play of the drive there is incomplete. The rookie DK Metcalf, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, hey, we talked about the AFC playoff picture. Let's look at the NFC. That's a different story. You've got Dallas and Philly neck and neck in the East, then Green Bay, New Orleans, and San Francisco as division leaders. But with only two more wild card spots, going to be some good teams left out in the cold in January. Yeah, because right now you've got Seattle at 7-2, and two, Minnesota Minnesota six and three. They would be in as of right now. But the Rams, five and three. Carolina, and whoever doesn't win the East out of either Dallas or Philadelphia, this is going to be a heck of a battle, isn't it? People are going to have an effect on this conference with every game that's played, maybe even teams that aren't in the conference. If you lose to someone, anyone, it could knock you out of the race. On third down. Carson, and it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be fourth down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. On the return, it's James. That'll be a 49-yard punt, six yards there on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Here we go. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Watch the curve. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Here we go, here we go. Wait, AD! Squeeze, squeeze, double, double. Single, single. Q27. Throwing on second down. Garoppolo. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. That's Ziggy Ansah, the number five pick in 2013, credited with a sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as go, best go, they can. And if you gave them three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. On play action, now Garoppolo. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. I remember a coach told me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL corner is like the autobahn everybody just flying by and these corners have been really busy in this game although they got it done on the last play on the last play yes but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively garoppolo again here on second and ten pressure comes he's taken down by the seahawk defense jaron reed breaking through to get him to the ground it's a loss of seven 
And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Looking to throw, Garoppolo. This one complete to Coleman. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. He got out of bounds, that's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down Let's close go. to the goal line at the one-yard line. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. The tackle by Eric Armstead. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Fred Warner coming off a strong rookie year in on the stop for the Niners. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try and move forward. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that's going to lead to a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Able to get this to Gordon. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. James now to return. 12 yards on the return that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, here we go, here we go. I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Here we go, here we go. Check four, check four. From midfield, here's Garoppolo. There goes a deep ball, end zone. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on here man. Go, go, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of here truth and make a here play on the football. Here we go. Back 
to the air on second. It's Garoppolo. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Here we go. Big play Ready. coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. here and the blitz does come. And able to haul it in is Kittle. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering here we go, here we go. there for that big strike and that big pickup? Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw. Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 18 yards, first down, Niners. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally here means? Go, go, go. Success. <laughs> <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. But for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. 12 yards there and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Here we go, here we go. And the question hey. now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Again, they'll throw with Garoppolo. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Here we go, here the line we go, here of scrimmage go. once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Come on, QB, come on. Check. <laughs> on the handoff, this is Breda. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. Garoppolo now on third and goal. And it's complete in the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Three touchdown passes now for Jimmy Garoppolo as his guys are able to regain the lead. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide's a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is up to five. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the 6. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. 
And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. We're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now Wilson, going to throw again. Completes it to Dixon. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not, and they'll try to convert on third and inches. Here's Carson, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. It's caught. Lock it. The completion good for three, and it's second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Wilson sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 at the 40. They'll start on the ground with Breida. Michael Kendricks, the linebacker, there to get him down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. They run again with Breida. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. They'll try and run for it here. It's Coleman. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Let's Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Here we go, here Not we go. totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 180! Hey, watch the ball, watch the ball. Now a give to Breida. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. On second down, it's Coleman. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line.
The first down line at the 34 here on third down. On third down, a run from Breda. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Oh, they come after him and it's blocked. Now it's picked up near midfield. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. As his guys are in for six. As his guys have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation. But to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late. But now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Garoppolo and the Niners now. Down by one. A minute 39 to go. The late fumble gives him unexpected new life as they come up first down. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Jaron Reed in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. The 49ers moving hastily. They're scurrying to the line. He'll look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Back-to-back, -back, big plays defensively. First the sack. Now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for them. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum go. going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out. Draw, screen, something that can be used against them. Now Garoppolo. And well, that's complete to Sanders. As Sanders has it poked free, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. On first down, it's Carson. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Hey, D line, let's get in there. Let's get in there. They run again with Carson. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. Now, San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. On third down, Carson 
And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So the victory here for Seattle, and they were really helped by their defense forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away. Taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Silicon Valley.